Hi, this is Igor. This tutorial is going to be a little different from what you're used to. I have started a small software company called Metafied, and we have our first DaVinci Resolve Studio helper application out there. This application is called Projector, and it's used to create complex DaVinci Resolve projects based on user set templates. Projector can also import media into those projects. Projector is available for DaVinci Resolve Studio version 15 because it uses the new scripting feature. So for the scripting to work, we have to go to Preferences, System, General, and set external scripting using local, and save that. In order for Projector to connect to Resolve, we have to make sure to start Resolve first, and then start Projector. Let's switch back to Resolve. Projector comes with a default template. The purpose of the template is to demonstrate the capabilities of Projector. The template is located this path right here. So let's create a new project. We'll call it My Project. We can leave the frame rate and resolution at their default settings. These values are there for your convenience, but they can always be changed later in Resolve. Let's click on Create. As you can see, Projector is creating a whole bunch of bins on the left side. And it's also imported some media. There's a 2-pop head leader, and so forth. The bin structure is very long, and there's some nested bins, so obviously creating this by hand would take quite a bit of time. Projector is really handy whenever you have to repeatedly create a complex bin structure with standard nomenclature, standard media assets. This is important anytime there's a lot of project handoff from one person to another. It's important to ensure that all the bins have standard names, so the next person who takes over knows exactly where everything is. This is all cool, but Projector actually goes beyond that, and to understand the real power behind Projector, we have to look at templates. For example, you could have your facility standard template, so every project is structured exactly the same way, or you could have templates for different clients, where you could, of course, import all the standard graphics, logos, lower thirds, whatnot. We're going to save the default template and use it as our starting point, building our own. I'll save it on the desktop. Call it default template. And we can use any text editor to edit templates. It looks a little complicated, but remember, once you set the template, you likely don't have to change it or you don't have to change it much. I'm going to delete most of this. As I said, we're going to use this as a starting point. This will become our bin. Let's call it shoot day. Close the quotes. And there's a square bracket that I deleted accidentally. I'll just put it back in. I'll save this as a new template. Let's call it my template. I'm saving it on the desktop. Here in Projector, let's open up the template. Browse, my template, open. And uh, let's call this My Project 2. Create. As you expected, Resolve has created one bin called Shoot Day. Well, if I need more bins, we have Shoot Day 1, 2, and 3. Save this. Let's call this project My Project 3. Create. And Projectors created Shoot Day 1, 2, and 3. But here's a great thing. We don't have to spell all this out. There are programmatic tokens in the templates that we can use. So let's delete all of this. Instead of numbering all these bins, I can just say times 10, for example. Save this. We'll call this my project 4. Create. And projectors created 10 bins based on our instructions. This token can be on the left or on the right. Let's place it here. Let's say 020 save this. My project 5 is the new project name. Create. Now our sequential numbers are on the left hand side and as you may have noticed we have three digits here and that translates into three digits in the bin names. This feature really beats creating all these bins by hand. Let's look at the projector's date and time token.
we'll save this new template. We'll call this my project six, create. And here on the left, we have the time is 1620. That's same as 420 PM. 2018 is the current year. The next token we can use is a file substitution token. I will call this bin bin1. Down here we'll do something else. We'll say at f for file. We're using the pipe symbol as a separator. And if you place a path to a text file here, the contents of the text file will become bin names. So for example, here on our desktop we have a file called bin list. Each one of these lines will become one bin. I will do a uh, kind of a Windows cheat here. We'll press Control C to copy this. We'll paste it here. And binlist.txt is the name of the file. Something that's specific to Windows operating system is that we have to use these double slashes or else this path is not going to work. We can also use the other kind of a slash when it's used on a Mac and Linux, but you don't have to do that. You can just use this. Let's save that. We'll call it my project seven. And as you can see, we have bin one that we created here in the template file, bin one. And then all of these other bins came from that text file. To recap projectors programmatic tokens, we have the bin sequential number multiplier. We have the date and time stamp and we have the file substitution token. And now for the remainder of the time, let's just look at how we can nest bins and how we can bring media in. I will delete this. We'll say uh, top bin. The JSON format is very flexible. You can put this all on one line or for readability purposes, you can split this on multiple lines. We'll save this. What we're telling the template here is to create a bin called top bin and then within that bin place sub bin one and sub bin two. Projector supports one level of recursion. Let's call this my project eight, create. We have top bin and the two sub bin, sub bin one, sub bin two. Let's take a look at how we bring media into bins of our choice. We'll put a comma say media, colon, square bracket. First we name the bin to which we want to import. Now there will be the import here bin. And then we spell out what needs to be imported into that bin. I'm going to resort to something we have already done. Let's copy this path and paste it here. We'll have to put it in quotes and add another slash ten eighty dot mov we'll close the curly bracket and then also the square save that my project nine empty bin contains nothing import here has one file in it so that's how we import media to bins. We specify the bin name that we have created up here, and then we give a full path to the file. We can do it one file at a time from anywhere in your system to any bin that you've created. Or if we delete the actual file name and just use the folder name, projector will import contents of the entire folder. If you think Projector can speed up your project creation, it is available for download at metafide.com.